Amazon has won the consumer game because they have personalized everything for you. You can have a personal filter as you search, so you can look up exactly what you're looking for. You can buy it, you can determine when it gets there. You can have all your custom preferences as you search. Amazon has won the consumer game by taking away all the barriers for you to purchase whatever your hearts desire. Yesterday, I, I had a, a, an adapter for a computer go out and I was on Amazon and within 45 seconds, it was being shipped to my house so that when I got home later that day, it would be there. Amazon has won the consumer game by giving us this sense of control, the sense of control that whatever we want, we should get. But it's not just Amazon that does that, right? I mean, you can go to Chipotle and get the burrito, that custom burrito, man. Do you want to pay the 50 cents to get the guac or no? Not only that, but your playlist. You can get all the songs you want. You don't have to listen to any songs that you don't like, even if the artist has some songs that you like and you don't like. You don't even have to buy the album anymore. You, you can just get the songs that you want and make this custom playlist and, and your social media feed. It's learning what you like and it's delivering you stories and pictures that it knows you'll want to see. And even, even you, you get to customize yourself and how you present yourself to the world through social media. And all this consumerism and all this customization that we can get our lives exactly the way we want it, it, it promises us happiness, doesn't it? That's the way the world says this works. Uh, Living life to the fullest means making your life what you want it to be. I remember this story that I heard on NPR like 15 years ago, and it's stuck with me since. It, it said that over like the last 80 years, the word citizen has been decreasing in use in news feeds and on, online and things like that. It, but the word consumer has been on the rise. C being a citizen has to do with both rights and responsibilities. You, as a citizen, you have rights, but you also have responsibilities because there are other citizens. But as a consumer, it's all about you. It's all about me. It's all about what I want and making everything customizable. And this, this is, this is inf infiltrated even how we view each other, right? Like you can go on dating apps and click what you want and what you don't want. And then the people that meet that customization, they, they fit. But we also think about this in the, in the people that we follow online and the leaders. Like I can find leaders or influencers online who I don't actually know, but they say exactly what I want them to say. And if I don't like what they say, I don't have to follow them anymore. I can go find someone else that's saying something that meets my needs and is customizable to me. And that, in, that affects how we think about following Jesus. Everything is so customizable that we come to Jesus thinking that the discipleship experience should be tailored to my preferences and the things that I want to get out of it. We come to Jesus much like Ryan Howard from The Office. Do you remember Ryan Howard's character from The Office? Ryan Howard said this, I got away with everything under the last boss and it wasn't good for me. So I want guidance. I want leadership. But don't just like boss me around, you know? Like lead me. Lead me when I'm in the mood to be led. I think oftentimes we follow Jesus with that mindset. I will follow as a consumer who expects customization of this discipleship process. But Jesus just calls us to follow him. Jesus says to us, follow me. And as we follow Jesus, the first thing it starts with is giving up control. It's giving up that need to customize everything. It's, it's giving him the reins of our life. Following Jesus starts with submitting control to him. Jesus has been teaching, and he's, he asked Simon Peter if he can 
use his boat. And so he's on the boat, and the crowds are gathered on the shore, and he's teaching them. And Simon Peter has, asked, has been asked to let Jesus use the boat, and he said, yes. But then in verse 4 through 5, Jesus commands Simon Peter. And he says, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Now, Simon has been fishing all night, and the nighttime is the right time to fish, and they didn't catch anything. And now Jesus wants him to fish in daytime after they've just cleaned their nets. I mean, they've spent the morning getting things clean. So Jesus is commanding him to restart and, and to go when a time that it doesn't make any sense. And, and not only that, he says, go out to deep water. Like, you're not just gonna paddle 10 feet. You're gonna be paddling for a while. And Simon Peter says, look, I tried. It didn't work. We've worked hard all night and caught nothing. Simon Peter is hearing the command of Jesus. And in his mind, he's saying, I know better. Because Simon Peter is wrestling with control. I think when it comes to following Jesus, the first thing that it is, is submitting control to Jesus by obeying his commands, even if it's not the right time, even if it doesn't make sense, even if we've tried it before and it didn't seem to work. It's hard work to love and forgive people, but Jesus commands us to love and forgive. It seems like it's never the right time to be generous to others and to the poor, but Jesus commands us to be generous. 